Athletes are more than just their numbers. Everything said and done, they are humans first. And just like all of us, they have a deep connection with places that made them and the people who supported them. In this new series, we try to look into those places and faces who made our superstars who they are today. Women's Quick Zone proudly presents Places and Faces. In this episode, let's start with former South African captain Minion Dupria. Now I want to take you to another place. Um, it is kind of a heartbreaking place, but uh, 2017 Bristol was the first word. Hot break. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the semi-final of the World Cup, um, and I mean for us it was quite special to get there because that was definitely part of our goal and um, to get to the World Cup semi-final for the first time. Um, it was really special, but getting that close and losing with two goals, it was really tough. It was a tough goal as well as another goal. We really thought that we could have made it all the way and played in that final, um, but it wasn't meant to be. But it was just um, that was probably the moment that it was a big shift in women's cricket in South Africa. After that, I think um, that's when CSA really started investing and, and we um, are more in the women's game and in grassroots and um, to professionalise women's cricket fully in South Africa. And it's definitely now a viable career option. So um, lots of good came from from the heartbreak, um, but definitely uh, it it was it was tough for us as a team to to get that close but not make it all the way. From that World Cup, do I want to take you to another World Cup match, Christchurch Hagley Oval against India, 2022? <laughs> was the one oh. word? Thriller. <laughs> Yeah, that was like it was. I think everybody, or oh, nail biter, everybody was on the on the edge of their seat. It was a real competitive game, and um, yeah, luck favors the brave. Um, I got lucky um, in that final over, got out again on no ball, and then we managed to pull the game through. So there was a lot happening in that last few moments, but just special um, that that I was part of that, and um, that we managed to pull it through, and that I managed to get a player of the match award at the World Cup was really something special and, and a moment I'll treasure for a long time. Uh, I remember after the press, a uh, post-match press conference, uh, I asked you about the what Dani had said about you. She uh, throughout the World Cup, she said this one thing that if there is a clutch situation, the one person you want at the crease that is Menyon, and if she is there, I trust her. And I asked you the question, and I still remember your reaction is that thank you, Dani, thank you, thank you for backing up. So. What's what's that like having that kind of backup of a captain who's your regular captain also? How how does it feel to know that it is the clutch most performance of one of the clutch most performances of the World Cup? How is to now looking back? Has it it sunk in that you you've just performed that uh, at uh, at the World Cup? Yeah, it's really special. I think obviously leading up to that game, I've gone through. Quite a, a, a bad patch, and I wasn't on the form I would, would have wanted to be on. And I think the nice thing is that, that, like you mentioned, like I had the backing from the team. Everybody wanted me to do well, and especially Danae. And um, obviously, uh, you, you care about what people think, so it, uh, it's natural, it's human that you want to make people proud and that you want to perform for the team. Um, so obviously, was I was really disappointed with my performances up until then. So to um, to really. Performed when it mattered most and, and helped the team to get over the line in a very important game and, and a thriller game against India was really special. Um, yeah, so I was very fortunate. I think all in all, um, just knowing that, the, that that I had the backing and everybody wanted me to do well. Um, yeah, it was maybe not the ideal World Cup up until then, but that really um, was a cherry on top for me to just um, you know you sometimes just want to prove to yourself that you're still good enough and that you have what it takes. It's, it's one thing if the nice says she wants me there in the, in, in the crunch moments, but for me. To be able to prove that um, I'm the person for that job um, was kind of nice. Yeah, been fantastic. Now I want you to take to England again, but this time uh, in the black for Manchester and two people. I want you to give me one word for Kate Cross and Alex Hartley. One word each. Mm. Um, it's it's hard to put it into one word. It's just an awesome human all around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's it's just um, if I have to put it into one word for each, it will one will be Delhi Capitals and other word challenges Bangalore. I mean, <laughs> you always think, um, when it's IPL time and they they yeah, have a good yeah, go yeah. at on social media. Um, but probably the best word for both of them is Snowballs Podcast. Yes, yes, that that the champions of the podcasters. 
So how were, how was your experience of at playing at the 100 the inaugural season uh, with, with of course Lizelli one of your country mates in in the same team how was that experience No it was really special I mean to be part of something different for the first time it was the first time that something like the 100 happened and leading up into the tournament we didn't really know what to expect yeah. um so it was it was it was just absolutely amazing the 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 effort and the backing that the ECB put into the tournament to make it such a huge success um the women's team played the first the opening game of the yeah. 100 which was really special to show their commitment towards women's cricket um it was it was a fantastic tournament the energy around it playing at the big stadiums um double headers with the men's game um it was just something different and probably um one of one of the highlights of my career thus far also i remember you you played the the manchester regionals played the first match and uh, Manchester batted first and then Emma Lamb came out to bat and the fireworks are going on her reaction is a jeep of her reaction i think for me that's the moment of the 100 where it's like yes we have achieved this it's it's really big for us and uh, it it was a fantastic tournament and uh, the other person i want to uh, you to tell me a one word about i know it is hard is someone you watched in the uh, melbourne stars family uh, that one person who has grown a lot as an all-rounder and uh, who might just be the one next legend of uh, australian cricket annabel sutherland one one for her um yeah i've got it's like a rising star i mean um she's been fantastic i saw her at a very young age and i can see that there's a lot of talent there but to see her recently um play in a world cup becoming a world cup winner that's really something special and i definitely think she's probably going to be the next elise berry for the australian team um she's got such a beautiful um technique as well she's really <laughs> solid in her technique and then she's a fantastic fast bowler she's got for her age and she's quite tall so she gets um uh, uh, she puts a lot of effort into the ball so it's really someone that I'm excited to see what the future is going to hold and how she continue to grow um from strength to strength also what is you played for melbourne stars you played for hobart hurricanes so what is your experience of wbbl is like have you seen this tournament grow from strength to strength from all these years that will go in the eighth season so what is your personal experience of the uh, women's big bash league Now it's been fantastic it has been really good for the growth of women's cricket i think the big bash was the first professional tournament that was out um for women's cricket as it was like basically our version of the IPL at that time yeah. and um just uh, the experience that, that that even like just for us from a south african point of view and um, we've been quite fortunate to have eight or nine different players going to the big bash at different stages and for them to get the experience and bring it back to our environment is it's really healthy um i think um you get exposed to what world class facilities and world class um structures are like i mean they are the best in the world for a reason they do invest a lot of a lot of money into the women's game and it's really nice to see um what a healthy environment is like when you get there it's really professional um so there's a lot of learnings when we go and things that we can still take back and and hopefully that we can share with some of the youngsters in our own team in South Africa but all in all I definitely think it's how grow the women's game in in general and it's it's definitely part of the reason that we see such a strong um global rise in women's cricket at, at recent times because the, it's just taken the game to the next level